forgot the title. Ah! Shalom! And welcome back to White Back by Tina Jeree and welcome back to Motivational Monday. And this motivation is going to be entitled, Let Go to Get. And don't forget to check me out in the Death Wobble podcast and to like, comment, and subscribe. Let's pray. Father God, we give you all the glory. We praise you. We magnify you. And we thank you, sir, for everything you've done, everything you're doing, and everything you will do. Lord, we love you. And we ask that you forgive us of sins we've committed knowingly and unknowingly. And we repent for perpetuating the generational curses that we perpetuated us and our ancestors and lord we ask that you um open our eyes and ears and hearts and minds to receive the word that you would like us to hear today make me your personal conduit so i can say to your people what you want me to say me in the background you in the foreground this is about your glory we thank you for the revelation the confirmation and the clarity in the name of jesus amen so turn with me if you will in your bible to philippians 4 and 6 and do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. My God, if you've, if you've been in the church, I'm pretty sure you have heard Philippians 4, 6. I'm pretty sure because we're not supposed to be worrying about a whole bunch of stuff in these streets, if we are doing what God has commanded for us to do, there's more important things that we need to worry about, my God. And we ain't got time to be worrying about the little things. These things that we think are big and huge, they're actually little things. God's that smoke and mirrors, my God. Smoke and mirrors, my God. These things are put in your path to distract you from what God has purposed and willed for you to do my god so don't be anxious don't be worried about anything and everything give prayer to god my god oh so when i was preparing this an example that god gave me last night thank you holy spirit for bringing that back because when i do my notes it's kind of like i do general um so i put example that god was giving me yesterday was the car wash and I'm like, today, I'm like, wait, what? I don't understand how this has anything to do with it. Let's talk about this, okay? So yesterday I went to wash my car. Now, if you've been following me for a, even a little bit, maybe a couple months, a few months, whatever, um, I get paid monthly. Hmm? Um, and so towards the end of the month, it's like, what? <laughs> because I got to make sure my bills are paid first. Got to make sure. Um, so I have found enough quarters in my car to wash it. Um, and when I put the quarters in the machine so I could wash it, it just took my quarters. And I'm like, wait a minute. Like, let me tell you, at Malachi 311, let me tell you. You also know about this word too. Malachi 311. God said he will rebuke the devourer when you give, when you give your tithes, my God. And I'm like, I'm a sower. On top of giving my regular tithes, I always make sure I have an offering. I've been doing this since I, I would say I didn't get for real, for real with God until I was like maybe 12, 13. And since I learned that principle, I've always done it. Out of all my mom's kids growing up, um, I was always the one that had money, always, because that principle, even when I was a kid, it rang true. It rang true. So he always made sure I had more than enough, my gold. So I was like, wait a minute, God, I know what your word says. Sometimes you got to tell God you know what time it is. Your word says you will rebuke the devourer. That's Malachi 311. You are going to rebuke the devourer. Okay, okay. And so then I instantly went to prayer. Went to prayer. I didn't worry about it. Moving on. We prayed about it. Moving on. We prayed about it. Moving on. When I say we, it was me and my, um, my child that's a special needs child. We prayed about it. I'm like, I may not be 
the most perfect out here in these streets. Mm -hmm. um, as most of us are not, we all have things that we have to work on. Um, but pray, 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 pray. Don't worry about it. Prayed about it, moved on. It's okay. God's going to take care of it. He always will. That is an example of with every, oh my God, let's go here. What if you're wondering, like, how am I going to pay this rent? God, how am I going to pay this rent? Gas is so expensive and I had to dip into my rent funds. Mm. How am I going to pay my rent? Pray about it. Don't worry about it. Pray about it. My God. We've heard this time and time again, but I cannot implore you enough how vital this is for your very existence. Because sometimes the enemy just wants to get you distracted. He wants to put those smoke and mirrors. He wants to put a, a, a sense of, uh, oh, I don't have enough. I have lack. My God, but you have prayer. You shall not be lacking. My God. God is going to open doors that no man can shut. God. And he's going to close the doors that no man can open. My God. And everything. Pray about it. I know you want this opportunity to happen. Pray about it. And then don't worry about it. Let it go. Let it go. It's going to happen. If God said it was going to happen, it's going to happen. Let it go. My God. Another example. When I was trying to get pregnant, it was taking years. My God. It was taking years. And my sister was like, you know what? You know, I know you're doing all this, like, taking your basal temperature and looking at your ovulation calendar. I know you're doing all of this. But just let go and enjoy yourself go the second i did that i got pregnant this is a word to somebody somebody wants to get pregnant my goat let go let go my god enjoy your right now enjoy it my goat so if there's a situation that you want my god Mm, she got it. Um, if there's a situation that you want, it will happen. But you have to pray. You have to be in prayer about it. You have to have um, thanksgiving in your heart. You know what, God? I don't understand this. But thank you for even presenting this opportunity in the first place. I don't get it. But whatever God has promised you that he's going to do, he will do. Don't worry about it. He is not going to let his descendants be begging for bread. Not in these streets. He's got it. He will take care of you. He will meet your needs. Don't worry. Pray. Don't worry. Pray. Anyway, I will link in the description one of the life-giving messages from Bishop Kevin Foreman in Harvest Church. It will bless you and inspire you and change your life. And thank you so much. This is such an honor. And shalom.